I must thank uh, Dr. Mayur, Dr. Atul, uh, Dr. Ajay Shukla, and the entire team for uh, conducting this wonderful uh, three-day academic session. And I'm sure it must be a very tedious job for the team to organize so many uh, speakers on a platform uh, in such a brilliant manner. And the, the best part is that it is going very much in time. So uh, without much delay, uh, I think uh, Dr. Anubha spoke very well on the importance of exercise in diabetes. And what I am going to tell you is probably what is the result of not exercising in diabetes. And the topic allotted to me is diabetes and sarcopenia. So sarcopenia is a common problem that we are facing in day-to-day -day practice. And all the more, it is going to be much more. The only problem is that we are not much aware about what is sarcopenia. So the definition in general for sarcopenia is basically it's a degenerative skeletal disorder, whereby you have a loss of uh, muscle mass, muscle strength, and the muscle function. So we see often very much in our day-to-day -day practice when the patients come to us and when they have shown to us, it is very difficult for them to get up from the chair and go back to their home. Many a times we see them that they come with support. Many a times we see them, they have a tendency to fall even in the OPD while they are walking. And that is where we must start looking out for uh, sarcopenia in all our patients. So diabetes and sarcopenia Overall, it forms a bi-directional link. We do not know what causes and what is the effect. It could be the diabetes causing sarcopenia or the other way around also is true that sarcopenia could lead to exacerbation of diabetes. Now, the reason why we are discussing is on one hand, we have a rising cases of diabetes globally. And on the other hand, we have an increasing life expectancy, which is leading to a rising population of the elderly population. And these elderly people are likely to suffer from sarcopenia due to old age. Now, this sarcopenia could lead to exacerbation of diabetes, could lead to uh, uncontrolled diabetes, or could lead to new onset diabetes. And that is why we must understand that how diabetes and sarcopenia are linked to each other and how they can exacerbate the problems together. So if you see this bidirectional link between sarcopenia and diabetes, we know that diabetes is a condition of insulin deficiency or insulin resistance, which leads to catabolic effect and can lead to sarcopenia. On the other hand, diabetes is also a condition of chronic inflammation, whereby we have increased inflammatory cytokines, there is lipid peroxidation, there is mitochondrial dysfunction, there is increased free platy plasma acids, and all these can lead to muscular dysfunction. On the other hand, with aging, you can have a decrease in protein intake, decrease in physical activity and exercise, which can further lead to a uh, degeneration of the muscles leading to sarcopenia. Now, on the other hand, if you have sarcopenia, then the muscle mass is reduced and you can develop a skeletal muscle insulin resistance. And this skeletal muscle res uh, insulin resistance, you know, can lead to increase in the activity of beta cells, whereby there is hyperinsulinemia and overall with hyperinsulinemia and decreased muscle uh, insulin sensitivity, you can land up in diabetes. So this is how the bidirectional link between sarcopenia and diabetes is very strongly studied. And we must understand this and we must start looking for sarcopenia in all our patients of diabetes and try to prevent it as much as possible. Now, if you come to the definition of sarcopenia, the defining uh, uh, criteria are diverse. We have no consensus definition on sarcopenia. And the earliest uh, the definition of sarcopenia that was uh, found in the literature by, was by Baumgarten, who uh, defined uh, with the help of uh, calculating the appendicular lean mass uh, uh, compared to the height. But then the first study that was done was the European Working Group of Sarcopenia, who gave the criteria for low muscle strength, low muscle mass, and poor physical performance. And that is how they defined sarcopenia. We have certain... Uh, upgradation and certain revisions of various uh, definition. But as of now, there is no consensus on a clear cut definition of sarcopenia. And it may vary from ethnic areas, geographical areas. And we recently had a paper from India by Dr. Nitin Kapoor, where they have come out with South Asian uh, classification and uh, consensus on the definition of sarcopenia, which of course is missing on this slide. 
but that is something which is worth reading and i would request all of you to go through that paper also now coming to what is the prevalence of sarcopenia and diabetes so we don't have much study from our country but then studies from japan and china have shown that in adults more than 60 years of age with diabetes their prevalence of sarcopenia could be as high as 15 to 20% similarly studies from the korean population they have shown that there is a three times higher chances of sarcopenia and decreased grip strength compared to non diabetic patients similarly in a study uh, done in 2675 Uh, elderly people it was shown that women showed double the risk of sarcopenia and diabetes compared to non diabetic patients and similarly in the english longitudinal study on aging they found that the odds ratio for developing sarcopenia and diabetes was 2.43 in men with diabetes so this is very important that diabetes per se increases the risk of sarcopenia and that is how we must uh, ensure that we examine the patients for sarcopenia interestingly it has also been found that type 2 diabetes patients even with similar muscle mass present with lower muscle performance and strength compared with non diabetic so muscle mass may not be the only way but muscle performance and strength are the other way to diagnose sarcopenia on the other hand if we see the prevalence of diabetes in sarcopenia then we have studies again from korea where we have a large study where the patients were studied uh, from age above 40 years and the individuals in the lowest skeletal muscle mass relative to body weight quartiles had two fold higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes compared with individuals at, at the highest quartile similarly in the korean genome uh, epidemiology study again a large study this also showed that the patients in the lowest muscle index had two fold higher odds of incident type 2 diabetes compared uh, to patients who had a good skeletal mass after adjusting for all the other confounders similarly lower hand grip strength was found to be predictive of elevated fasting glucose in more than 17000 chinese men and women aged over 40 years so all these evidences clearly mention that the prevalence of diabetes is increased in the presence of sarcopenia and most over in the uh, presence of sarcopenia with obesity which is again a big problem that is upcoming there is a still greater risk of incident type 2 diabetes because obesity per se leads to metabolic syndrome so it is very important to understand what are the mechanisms of sarcopenia in diabetes and this is where the focus of our talk would be we know that diabetes is a condition of insulin resistance and prior to diabetes development we have insulin resistance in our population so the study which was done on osteoporosis in men the men aged 65 years above without type 2 diabetes but in the highest quartile of insulin resistant they showed two fold higher risk of losing more than 5% total lean mass over approximately 5 years similarly in the nan study they found that the gait speed decreased across increasing quartiles of insulin resistance compared to non diabetic older men and in the baltimore longitudinal study of aging the knee extensor strength was lower across increasing quartiles of hba1c even before diabetes was diagnosed so all these evidences clearly mention that with increasing insulin resistance the muscle health deteriorates and that is where the sarcopenia develops so the loss of muscle strength and mass in individuals with poor glycemic control even in patients with insulin resistance this is basically due to increased protein degradation and decreased protein synthesis and that is what we will discuss in the later slides second important mechanism is the chronic inflammation associated with diabetes and we know that in pelvian 6 tumor necrosis factor alpha c reactive proteins they are all elevated in patients with type 2 diabetes especially when there is associated obesity and studies have shown that there is an inverse relationship between il6 and muscle strength similarly there is an increase there is an inverse relation between crp as well as the hand grip strength in various population studies so apart from this uh, the inflammatory markers are also negatively associated with muscle strength which is now considered the principal component of sarcopenia so i would focus uh, i would emphasize again and again that sarcopenia is not just loss of muscle mass but it is also a decrease in the muscle strength the other mechanism that is oxidative stress which occurs in type 2 diabetes through dyslipidemia insulin resistance increased advanced glycation end products and mitochondrial dysfunction they all lead to impairment in the muscle repair there is impairment in the satellite cell differentiation in the myocytes there is a decrease in the damage of uh, there is an increase in the damage of dna 
and there is an overlapping mitochondrial dysfunction. So these impairments in oxidative capacity, it leads to a decreased metabolism of macronutrients and leads to a poor physical performance. There are studies which have shown that now type 2 diabetes has intergenerational effects on mitochondria and studies have shown that patients born, in fact, the children born out of uh, diabetic patients have almost 30 to 40% lesser mitochondria than the patients who are born out of non-diabetic patients. So these are uh, recent uh, studies and recent findings which we need to further study. Diabetes is associated with increased advanced glycation end products, which is positively further associated with insulin resistance, obesity, and we know that these advanced glycation end products lead to increased protein cross-linking within the muscles, thereby interfering with the contractility, increasing inflammation, increasing oxidative stress. The study in Japanese adults showed that higher skin autofluorescence was associated with lower hand grip strength and leg extension power. Now, this uh, skin autofluorescence is one of the surrogate marker for uh, studying advanced glycation in products. Of course, these are used in research purpose, but what we need to understand that these are one of the ways to study advanced glycation and products and its relation with grip strength, abduction strength, and hip flexion. Di diabetes is associated with various micro and microvascular complications. There are studies which have shown that with the, with the presence of microvascular uh, complications, there is a decrease in the muscle uh, strength, there is decreased contractility, and nerve damage can also lead to muscle atrophy. Similarly, diabetic retinopathy can affect vision, which is one of the key components of balance, and balance we know is required for locomotion as well as physical performance, and also helps in preventing the falls. Similarly, diabetic nephropathy causes catabolic wasting, there is muscle wasting, there is increased inflammation, protein loss, there is reduced vitamin D synthesis, associated mitochondrial dysfunction and metabolic acidosis, which can lead to muscle wasting. Microvascular complications, especially the atherosclerosis leading to peripheral vascular disease can cause a decrease in the blood supply to the muscles and, can, uh, and is related to lower hip extension and knee and hip flexion in older adults. So reduced blood flow in peripheral arterial disease leads to ischemia, leads to decreased muscle strength, mass and performance and it can lead to reduced physical activity and exercise due to the pain associated with peripheral vascular disease. Adipose tissue infiltration into muscles is another very common and sarcopenic uh, obesity is very common in diabetes patients. The inter and intramuscular adipose tissue is basically an ectopic fat which is associated with poor metabolic outcome and this leads to decreased in insulin sensitivity and it is an independent predictor of physical function as well as falls. The Adipose tissue localized ectopic is also a uh, reason for increased localized cytokines leading to muscle dysfunction. Then there are certain anti-diabetic drugs which are also associated with decrease in body weight. There may be some drugs which may lead to muscle mass. The only drug that is anabolic is insulin and there are some studies which show that metformin is anabolic. But the rest of the drugs have not shown, uh, study, uh, have not shown any positive effect on muscle mass. So if we see the causative factors for sarcopenia, two most important factors are decrease in physical activity and the poor nutrition, which can lead to sarcopenia. And that is where we have to intervene in our diabetes patients. So coming to the treatment of sarcopenia and diabetes, we can have caloric restriction for uh, decreasing obesity. We have to go for exercise training, resistance training, the vitamin D supplements, omega-3 fatty acid supplements. And that is how probably we have some evidences in favor of these supplements for treating sarcopenia. So the most important is physical activity. We need to have supervised aerobic as well as strength training. Resistant training is found to be the most effective strategy. It improves uh, muscle strength, size, as well as the quality. And if we combine resistance exercise with aerobic training, then on one hand, aerobic training will improve the metabolic health. On the other hand, resistance exercise will improve the musculoskeletal health. So for diabetic, uh, patients who are obese, we must combine both these exercises. Coming to diet, calorie restriction is very important, especially for obese patients. But at the same time, we must see that there is adequate proteins. We must supplement patients with branched-chain amino acids because they are known to improve the muscle synthesis. Vitamin D receptors are present in the skeletal muscles and vitamin D supplementation has been shown to improve muscle strength. Omega-3 supplementation improves muscle performance, decreases chronic inflammation. 
and so we need to go for medical nutrition therapy which has to be individualized based on the availability affordability and the social uh, taboos prevalent in the society so based on that we must go for a medical nutrition therapy to prevent sarcopenia or to treat sarcopenia proteins may not be sufficient so proteins have to be combined with exercise there must be vitamin d supplements and other micronutrients to augment the yeah, effect of exercise and improve uh, the uh, muscle strength so to summarize on one hand we have aging hormonal imbalance low dietary intake inactivity and chronic inflammation in diabetes on the other hand we must address energy needs protein requirements amino acids uh, we must go for essential fatty acids vitamin uh, and mineral supplementation and there should be multimodal interventions in all these patients so the key message is identify that there is a bidirectional link between type 2 diabetes and sarcopenia we have different operational definitions of sarcopenia and that is why we are not able to uh, find out uh, the right patients but evidence for most of the effective and feasible interventions in both these conditions is lacking and that is why there is a need for further research to better understand treat and prevent comorbid sarcopenia and type 2 diabetes with that i thank you all and the message is keep exercising till we find what we can do for sarcopenia in the future thank you